after going AWOL, that's what they call it in the military anyway, Kyrie Irving has returned to the Nets. All is well. Sleep easy. Kyrie is back at the office. Now, Kyrie broke his very long silence, his mysterious absence. He showed up to practice. And then, much to his disdain, was part of a Zoom news conference on Tuesday. I don't know if you had a chance to see this or not. Kyrie, uh, not, a, not a big fan of the media, does not, like, uh, does not enjoy the basketball bloggers who seem like a very peaceful bunch. Uh, when I've been around these basketball bloggers, they love their NBA players. They worship their NBA players. They're very rarely critical, very rarely critical of the NBA players, but uh, so be it. Anyway, so Kyrie, uh, if you didn't see it, he had his uh, news conference. So I'll give you the condensed highlights of this. In fact, we have some audio that we will play rather than me just pretending to be Kyrie, which I'm not bad at. I could be a Kyrie impersonator, but you'll hear the question and the answer. Here is Kyrie asked about going away for two weeks unplanned. Can you shed some light on what the last couple of weeks have been like for you and the time you need it all? There's a lot of family and personal stuff going on, so just want to leave it at that. Oh, I'll leave it at that. Okay, there you go. Let's take uh, take a little break there, and you know those birthday parties. No, I, listen, it's hard to you got to stay up late for those birthday parties, and if you have practice the next day, it's problematic. All right, here's more from Kyrie. He also violated the COVID guidelines, and he got fined two game checks. That's a lot of money when you're in the tax bracket Kyrie Irving is in, and he was asked about that. I'm wondering if you were aware that you had violated the health and safety protocols and what that process was like for you in coming back and going through that investigation one. And then secondly, what your communication was like with the team while you were away. Happy to be back. Happy to be around you guys. <laughs> address the team, address everybody that needed to be addressed. Now it's time to move on. All right. So he didn't actually answer that. He just gave a uh, prepared statement. And uh, he just needed a pause, he said at one point there, and uh, Uncle Drew. Uh, here's one more from uh, Kyrie. He wanted to get the word out to those longtime Brooklyn Net fans. The fans out there want to apologize to them as well. You know, my commitment has always been to bring in something special to Brooklyn. You know, it wasn't just a championship. It was unity. It was equality. It was just bigger things than just the game itself. You know, it took – quite a while and quite a few um, valleys to get back home initially. So for, for me, I'm just taking every day, just being grateful. But for the casual or the fanatic, it's part of our culture. And, you know, I'm back. I'm happy to be back. And we got some great pieces and we just move on. And I let my actions and my game speak for itself like I planned on doing. Just needed a pause. Oh, your actions are speaking, Kyrie. They're speaking loudly. It's part of the culture. Is that so? You just take a couple weeks off whenever you want. Is that the NBA culture? Is that that's pretty much what he said? Am I hearing that wrong? That's what it sounded like to me. Uh, so listen, I, I watched this. It was about ten minutes. Uh, Kyrie was mostly evasive. Occasionally, he had a wee bit of insight during the ten minutes of agony with the unwashed media. And one of the money quotes. And I think we heard some of this in the, the sound bites that we played. He said, we have to come to an agreement to stay balanced during this long journey. And that's what I'm trying to do. It's all about balance. You know, I mean, hey, uh, we all have uh, this show would be a lot more fun if I only did it like three days a week. And, you know, I'm, I'm good for three. The other two, I don't know. All right. So what are your expectations? Let us discuss. What are your expectations for Kyrie Irving? He is set to play, allegedly in the game Wednesday night. But what are your expectations for Kyrie Irving with the Nets going forward? He's yet to play a game with James Harden and with uh, Kevin Durant because he's been away. So I have the 1980s sitcom Clown Car and Mashed Potatoes, and we will tie all of these things together. Now, A, you don't have to be a distant relative of the great Nostradamus or a friend of Nostradamus to know this is likely going to end very badly. Uh, when I say badly, it's not going to end in, in glory for Kyrie. Uh, highly questionable, at least from the Kyrie part of this, that it's going to have the happy ending for all of 
his gifts as a basketball player. He is lacking an intangible that will be his fatal flaw. It is something that you don't have to have just in basketball. You need it in anything that you do. It's called dependability. Right? We often say in sports, the best ability is availability. Kyrie shows up when he wants to. He doesn't show up when he doesn't want to. And that is not someone you want on your team. Right? Irving's he's lacking that with the Nets. He's not the kind of teammate or coworker you would want to hunker down with in a foxhole. At least not me. Maybe you like fly-by-night people that you, you work with, but I, I want people that are going to be there and be reliable and all that publicly – the Brooklyn franchise has shown a lot of support. It's it's kind of like that that old sitcom from the 1980s, the facts of life, right? You take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you have the facts of life with Kyrie Irving anyway. So, and really they have no choice. Do they have a choice? It's the life that they have chosen, for better or worse. The Nets knew what they were getting. And Kyrie's reputation from his days in Boston, he wasn't there very long. But he left his mark on the Celtics, and so when he signed on the dotted line, his name is John Hancock there, uh, the Nets then immediately rubber-stamped the bad behavior. You pay out of the nose, which is what they did. Kyrie's got the max contract, and you pay up for a, a, a guy who, depending on how he feels, will show up. You can't trust him. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Now, Part B of this, one of the most surprising parts of this puzzle is the general apathy that many have had towards it. The the Kyrie Irving story has gotten a little bit of play, but Kyrie's been driving the clown car, and most people are waving on the side of the road and encouraging him as he drives around the big top, uh, covering their eyes, plugging their ears from the dereliction of duties, and no matter how insufferable Kyrie acts and all the shtickle that he throws out, the lap dogs and the jock sniffers either soak it up or just ignore it. It's very bizarre. All right? We're not sure why that is happening because typically that doesn't happen. When the star athlete has a meltdown, when the star athlete disappears, which has happened sporadically without telling anyone, anyone at all, uh, th- there are going to be... Uh, things that are going to happen that are not going to be good. And uh, there's a uh, condemnation, but not here. In this case, it's Kyrie being Kyrie. The fly-by-night approach is rationalized. He's the bohemian baller. He marches to the beat of his own drummer and all those. All right, last word. So the Nets are good enough with James Harden and Kevin Durant to win a truckload of games. And so in the regular season, now, as you get later in the playoffs, is that going to stand the test? Uh, James Harden has a resume of needing the Heimlich maneuver in postseason situations, sporadically. So he's had some good playoff games. He's also just vanished. Uh, I remember when the Rockets played the Spurs, no show. When they played the Warriors, there was a game he didn't show up for in one of those series. I recall actually a couple of series where he just disappeared at times. But at this point, whatever. Brooklyn gets out of Kyrie, I would put in the bonus category. It's akin to ordering mashed potatoes and having the chef unexpectedly pour extra gravy all over your mashed potatoes. You don't necessarily need extra gravy. However, you're not going to reject it. Now, Kyrie is, is the third wheel for the Nets. Right? It's going to be Harden and Durant. You got 10 seconds left in the game. You can, you can play a two man game. You're going to play with Harden and Durant. You can play with Kyrie and Harden or Kyrie and Durant. No, you go with Harden and Durant. Harden's actually a better point guard, if you want to go by the numbers, than Kyrie. Now, I will also point out watching that Zoom news conference, body language. The body language in that news conference, you smell that? Disgust and agony. It appeared that Kyrie was not visiting with the reporters. It was like he had gone to the dentist's office and was getting a root canal, and they had forgotten to numb his mouth. He gave the vibe that he couldn't give two poops about anything. And likely that's the vibe he wanted to give. It was, if anything, an inconvenience, a very annoying inconvenience, 
and he spent most of it deflecting like Iron Man and speaking in generalities and in circles. And I, I appreciate condescending snark. He gave a lot of condescending snark. And so there, there's a lot left open to interpretation, which is good for people in my business because if you don't actually answer the questions, we can then parse the words and come up with our own answers. And uh, the, the key here, and well, it's a big test, is Kyrie going to be able to compartmentalize on the court? Because right? stuff's going to happen, and he's a social justice warrior. He's a warrior. Now, Golden State were a social justice warrior. So is he going to be able to you know, do his job, which you, know, you have to do, kind of. It's part of the gig. So can you compartmentalize on the court? And even if he does, how long is it going to last? We'll find out. 